Hey everybody, it's Valentine's Day weekend, and even though no one's sending me a Valentine, I'm only eight days away from Las Vegas. So let's check out Vegas Weekly. Okay, everybody, uh, welcome back to Vegas Weekly for Saturday, February 13th, 2021. A reminder, we will not have a show next Saturday. I'll be preparing myself for uh, my flight the next day. So uh, we'll look forward to some uh, actual Vegas vlogging. If any of you uh, were kind enough to join me on my uh, on this week's Wednesday show, you uh, got uh, quite a show as uh, <laughs> kind of a train wreck, but uh, um, hope that you enjoyed watching uh, uh, that train wreck as best you could. Now, this Wednesday, there will not be a Wednesday show either, but we're going to do a live stream at 6 p.m. Vegas time. So, obviously, that's 7 p.m. if you're in Denver, like Ace of Vegas, um, 8 o'clock where I am, uh, 9 o'clock on the East Coast, and obviously extremely early in the wee hours of the morning if you are overseas. So, so that's coming up and we'll do uh, kind of do a preview of what we're going to be doing in Las Vegas. We have a couple of pretty interesting news items today and we have two, count them, one, two guests on our show today. Uh, really excited to welcome a couple of folks who have not done the show before. So um, it's going to be pretty cool and uh, so we'll try to keep our... Uh, personal segments down so uh, we, this thing doesn't stretch out to be like 45 minutes long because nobody wants to nobody wants to see that let's be honest all right so the big news in Las Vegas this week the governor spoke on Thursday and uh, eh, well it might not be what everyone was looking for there was an easing in some of the restrictions on gatherings and such. And so let's just touch on that briefly. You know, if you're on, you've been on the social media, if you've checked out uh, different sites, you've probably heard some of this before, but wanted to just summarize it. First of all, this Monday, February the 15th, the occupancy levels at most places, bars, restaurants, etc., etc., will move from 25% to 35%. That doesn't sound that like that big a deal, but it's certainly helpful. As I've mentioned in the past, those sort of occupancy uh, limits very rarely affect casinos because, you know, any large gathering area, but certainly uh, raising that number will help out a lot of bars and restaurants that could certainly use some help right now. There are a number of other places outside of that that actually will move to 50% occupancy on that day. Uh, I believe indoor gatherings can now be as large as 100. And I don't think there are any restrictions on outdoor gatherings as long as social distancing is maintained. The other piece of that that may be even more interesting is the fact that just one month later on March 15th, all the numbers uh, go back up to 50%, which is pretty much what they were uh, when uh, we were there back in October. Now, the other thing about the uh, February 15th rule, which is kind of interesting and helpful to me, is you no longer have to make reservations. Um, that was kind of a thing uh, for the last uh, month, six weeks, two months, not sure exactly how long, but uh, restaurants do not need to uh, require reservations, and your party size can now be as large as six. Finally, in that news piece, there uh, is assuming that things continue to get better, and they should, to be honest. Uh, but on May 1st, uh, given that context, we should see uh, basically the rules as far as gatherings and, you know, and occupancy and those kinds of things will no longer be set by the state, but will revert to the individual um, cities, municipalities, counties, etc. So uh, as of May 1, 
assuming nothing changes, uh, it would be up to the city of Las Vegas and Clark County to uh, decide what rules there are as far as gatherings. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of pleased about the fact that, uh, that they're doing away with the reservation requirements. Sometimes it's not easy to get a reservation for one. I tried to the other day and they basically said no. So uh, probably would have still dropped in and uh, checked out the bar, which is still actually the plan. So uh, there were some travel restriction uh, clarifications, I guess, uh, within the last day or two as far as our Canadian visitors. And it looks like starting February 22nd, things get much more restrictive there. So it looks like I'm probably going to miss out on uh, a uh, reunion with uh, Tamara and Gord from Vegas Best Ideas. Uh, definitely check out, check out their channel if you haven't. And uh, finally in the news this week, and again, you may have heard this, but March 25th, and I wonder if it's a coincidence or whether they were tipped off, but March 25th, we're going to see the opening of the Virgin Hotels. Um, interestingly enough, um, I went online, apparently they're affiliated with Hilton in some ways. Uh, they're also affiliated with the Mohegan Sun Casino, as I think we mentioned a few weeks back. So we'll be interested to see how that goes. Obviously, the old site of uh, the Hard Rock. Virgin Hotels generally is a fairly upscale property. They do not uh, have resort fees, but it is uh, certainly not cheap. Uh, the Hard Rock struggled at times being off strip, and I wonder if the same thing will happen with Virgin. Um, I hope not. I look forward to visiting that property. I did enjoy the Hard Rock, but um, I will be interested to check this one out uh, when I get the opportunity to do so. Uh, but it is off strip. It's a little pricey. I checked, uh, I went online and uh, just checked to see rates on sort of a random date and uh, like April 7th, which I think was a Wednesday or a Thursday. The cheapest room was $155. So this is not obviously not a budget property. I'm curious, uh, again, how the casino will look. I'm curious if they'll do any sort of uh, shuttle service to the Strip. So that's not really a, fair, a very pleasant walk, to be honest with you. It's a little shady. So there you go. East Harmon can get a little bit uh, sketchy at spots. So we will see. I, I certainly hope they're successful. Uh, I want to see uh, new properties in Las Vegas. And I want to see everyone be successful. Um, and of course, obviously, here in a few months, we're also looking, hopefully, at uh, Resorts World coming online. Last I heard, probably June, but I don't think they've announced anything official yet. Okay, so I'm really excited today because we have two guest spots. Um, uh, we're giving PJ the week off. We're giving him next week off. Who knows about the week after that? I might just be doing a vlog. But... Um, my friend Kathy Grant, uh, go Alice Cooper, from uh, England, uh, has uh, some connections in Las Vegas with uh, some different bars and bartenders. And she uh, messaged me a few weeks ago, I think, already about the possibility of bringing in an actual professional bartender. And so we have one today from a real bar. Um, the Golden Tiki, which uh, is in a, a small sort of strip mall in the Chinatown area uh, off on West Flamingo, was there with uh, a Good Times Productions and Vegas Best Ideas, uh, I don't know, been about a year and a half ago now. Pretty cool place, a lot of fun vibes. I think uh, uh, Vegas Best Ideas, well, they did actually do a live stream from there, so uh, check out their channel and check that out if you want to see what... Uh, the Golden Tiki is all about, but um, Kathy was able to hook me up with Adam uh, from the Golden Tiki, and he is going to share a very cool tiki drink today. Now, um, I'm going to list in the show notes below a whole bunch of social media links and such for Golden Tiki, uh, so definitely follow them. We appreciate uh, Adam doing this. We appreciate Kathy setting it up. We appreciate the whole staff at Golden Tiki. Uh, I don't know if I'll make it up there uh, uh, next week, but uh, I definitely want to thank them for participating and for promoting this video. And uh, it's a really cool uh, uh, 
Like I said, it's a really cool video, a lot of history and uh, a very interesting cocktail. So Adam, uh, again, thank you for doing this and uh, let's check it out, shall we? Aloha, this is Adam Rains at the world famous Golden Tiki in Las Vegas. And this is your cocktail of the week. Welcome to Las Vegas Tips and Tricks Cocktail of the Week. I am Adam Rains from the world famous Golden Tiki here in Las Vegas. And today I'm going to make you the Lemba Lemba Akulapu. Let's make this cocktail. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'll get my mixing tin, my nice tiki mug. I am going to get that nice and cold because a cold cocktail is of course a better cocktail. So we're gonna start with this cocktail. This cocktail has a little bit of tie into Vegas history was a version of this cocktail was featured in the Aku Aku Room in the Stardust in Las Vegas, 1960s and on. And uh, before that, there's other versions of it. It was originally made by the godfather of Tiki, Don the Beachcomber. And uh, it was actually named after the man who killed Magellan. Little side note there. So anyway, let's start with this cocktail. So we're gonna do a little bit of Lime juice. I'm gonna keep going. So I also have a little bit of grapefruit juice here. Do an ounce of that, and you might notice that. Oh, this is gonna be kind of in a tart realm. You might consider tiki drinks as being sweet, and many of them are. They're definitely juicy, sweet, booze, loads of booze. You need to balance out and kind of cover up some of the taste of the booze a little bit. Um, this one though falls in the tradition of, you know, uh, grapefruit tiki cocktails, which are a little bit less sweet, of course. So, so, so far we have the lime juice, we have the grapefruit, the nice tart acidity. Um, to balance that out, I'm gonna do a little bit of Demerara. Demerara, of course, is a style, style of sugar of from Demerara River, Guiana. Um, and uh, you can make it at home using sugar in the raw. Um, you know, there's you can do like a light brown sugar. There's a lot of different ways to kind of do the equivalent, but it is a little richer than a normal simple syrup. Next, we will do some Pusser's Rum in that tradition of a British style rum. We have the Pusser's. We love it. It has a great molasses -y richness to it and uh, it brings the proof. Next, let's do some Velvet Falernum. Falernum, of course, is a citrus clove baking spice liqueur, originally from Barbados. You can make your own as well, which is fun and you can Definitely uh, kind of tweak the recipe that way. We're gonna do about three fourths of an ounce of the Velvet Falernum. Some people call it tiki ketchup because it kind of goes with everything. And next we will do a spice rum. We wanna spice this thing up. This one is from the Dominican Republic, but it is bottled and spiced here in Las Vegas. So of course we love our town and we wanna support local as much as we can. So we'll do about half ounce of that. Next, we have the Lemba Agricole. Agricole is made from the fresh pressing of the sugar cane. So it uh, has a little bit more of a herbal uh, character to it than uh, like, for instance, a Demerara style. Um, this one has that herbaceousness. It's a little higher proof too. So it, it definitely bolsters the caliber of this cocktail. Okay, and next, of course, I need a little help. Who doesn't need a little bit of tiki bitters in their life? So I'm gonna do a couple drops of tiki bitters just to spice this up and uh, give it a touch more of the exotic. Cause that's what you come to a tiki bar for. Even if it's somewhat faux exotic, you still come for the exotic, you come for escapism. I look at tiki as the quintessential bar room escapism. Uh, before you even have a drink, even if you don't have a drink, you're instantly transformed. So. Let's, uh, before I shake this cocktail, let's taste it a bit. Mm, it's right there. So all of this cocktail needs now is a little bit of dilution and a little bit of aeration. And that's what this is gonna do. You'll notice I just have a little bit of ice, this pellet ice here, and I just put a little bit in there. 
Um, and it's, like I said, mainly to aerate the cocktail and uh, incorporate the ingredients. But let's get it going. And you want it to shake it, get it nice and frothy. Also, dilute it a touch. So that cocktail's pretty much ready, so let's just go. So I have my mug here, it's been chilling. I'm going to get some fresh ice, why not? Because I, I want to control the amount of dilution. So this way, we get the fresh ice, we pour this cool, not fully chilled or diluted cocktail, but a cool cocktail. We put it in there and, and then we, we will douse it with the pellet ice. So I'll pour it right into that chilled mug and put that there. And then I'm going to get it to its coldest point as fast as possible. So you might say like, hey, I don't like as much ice in my drink. I'm like, actually you do. And you should, because ice isn't a replace, replacement for booze. We jigger all of our drinks, of course. Um, it's there to chill, fill, but then it also, you, if you can get this nice ice crown on here, and Chief Lapu was a king, um, so you need to get a crown. You need to get it to that coldest point possible, and then that cocktail will kind of, will, will stay. We'll have a nice staying power to it. One fun thing with tiki is they can garnish it in a number of different ways. You can kind of have fun with it because you're, you're creating one school experience through cocktails, through the decor, um, and you know we should dress the drink accordingly in my opinion. So I have a couple swizzles here, little pineapple, dehydrated pineapple flour from Dress the Drink, a couple pineapple fronds right there, and why not give Chief Lapu a flower crown. He was a king. There we go. And of course, the straw. So here we have the Lemba Lemba Akulau. Cheers. Okay, thanks again so much uh, to Adam for doing that for Golden Tiki. Uh, definitely check out their social media links. Uh, and if you're in Las Vegas, make sure to uh, visit uh, them. It's a fun place to hang out. They've got drinks and food and uh, a great environment. So, we have a second guest spot today. Uh, might not have done it today, but since we're not going to do a show for probably a couple of weeks, I, I thought... Uh, I would go ahead and slip it in. It is a Vegas tip or trick of sorts. I've had a lot of uh, uh, s different spots uh, discussing uh, different cocktails. But today we have a Vegas tip about food, particularly about a particularly delicious appetizer. And just to uh, sort of um, set this up, uh, this is uh, from Tom of Tom and Mindy's Adventures. They have a YouTube channel. They I think they started doing some content a couple of years ago. Uh, Tom lives down in Oklahoma. He's a bail bondsman. We've gotten to be fairly good friends online. And he asked me, hey, can I do something for the show? And I was like, absolutely. So he somehow broke into the Oval Office or some variation thereof. And uh, he wanted to share a food tip about Las Vegas, which uh, sounds pretty good. So we're going to go ahead now and send it over to Tom and uh, let him share his thoughts about uh, an Italian restaurant uh, that uh, is uh, at the Paris Hotel called Martorano's and uh, a particular item there that he recommends you check out. So Tom, take it away. Uh, you made it. I mean, I made it. If you're seeing me, then I, I'm on Vegas Tips and Tricks. Uh, oh, I'm Tom. Uh, a few of you might know me as the front half of Tom and Mindy. 
I've been wanting to come on Vegas Tips and Tricks. I've been wanting to guest on this show for a while. I just, I didn't know what content I was going to come up with. Then it dawned on me. In the past 23 or 4 years of going to Vegas, I've eaten a lot of Vegas food. There's some really good stuff I can recommend. Um, and there's some stuff that that you might not otherwise try if I didn't tell you about it. There's one in particular that I avoided for years. I refused just because of the name. How are you? Hi. Eggplant stack. Right? <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna like eggplant. For some reason, I finally broke down and I tried it. It doesn't taste like eggplant. It's my new favorite appetizer. Deep fried, battered, seasoned, deep fried eggplant. Fresh, warm mozzarella cheese. Thick slice. Uh, and then it's got a thick slice of a really well marinated seasoned tomato uh, and then it's topped off with some parmigiano regano cheese i don't know it's got some more stuff in it but it is amazing and i want to recommend that you try it forget the name they should change the name they'd sell a lot more of them if they if they called it uh anything except eggplant stack I want to recommend that you try it, like I did, even though it sounds awful. Try it and I promise you, you will not taste eggplant. Um, I promise you'll like, no, I guarantee that you'll like it. If you go to Moderano's and get the eggplant stack, try it, and if you don't love it, then send John a message, tell him you want your money back. He probably won't give it to you, but that won't be a problem because I promise you're going to love it. And I'll bet nobody is going to come back and say, I tried it and it's not great. Nobody's going to say that. I stake John's reputation on it. Gosh, I wonder if he's going to have me back anymore after this. <laughs> if you're still watching, Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for not leaving. Uh, I'm going to send it back to John now. John, thanks for having me on Vegas Tips and Tricks. I can't believe I'm here. Bye, y'all. Okay, Tom, thanks for doing that. Hey, if you would like to be on Vegas Weekly, you can send me an email on the... Uh, at the address that is underneath my head as we speak, J.R. Swift at VegasTipsTricks.com, or heck, if you have me on Facebook or Twitter, or whatever, just message me. Um, love to have you on. Love you to share. Uh, you know, if you want to do a cocktail of the week, that's cool. If you've got another idea, then uh, that is cool as well. I will also post a link to Tom and Mindy's channel in the show notes below, so make sure that you check them out and subscribe. They've had some great uh, food videos. Uh, stayed in some amazing rooms that uh, you don't see videos of very often. So, again, thanks to Tom for that. Um, last week, uh, I talked very long and very quickly about some first-timer tips in Las Vegas. And we're going to kind of continue that theme this week. We're going to make it a little more abbreviated because, like I said, the show's gotten a little long with uh, both of the guest spots. So... One of the things that constantly comes up when people ask about Las Vegas is where should I stay? We touched on that a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned if you're a first time visitor, you want to stay probably within sort of the range of say Mirage, Harrah's on the north end of the strip, and then maybe like Planet Hollywood, uh, Aria on the south end. Because that, that makes most of the strip fairly accessible by walking. 
you may not always want to walk. But on the other hand, you know, you might stay at some great properties and, you know, I love wind. It's a little bit further north than I would prefer to be if I'm, I'm walking and, and checking things out for the first time. Uh, love Mandalay Bay, but again, a little far south if it's your first place to stay. So you're going to want to try to stay in that zone, sort of mid-strip. For me, the ideal location is the corner of Flamingo Road and Las Vegas Boulevard. There are four hotels that are located on that four corners. Bellagio and Caesars Palace, obviously everybody knows and has heard of those properties. They are a little, in my opinion, overpriced, um, particularly if you're not going to be spending a lot of time in the room. Because everybody knows these properties, because of the location, um, this, they're able to, I think, kind of uh, uh, charge more than the rooms themselves are worth. Um, I mean, that being said, they're great properties, great amenities, great restaurants, shows, all those kinds of things. So um, if you can get a good deal and stay there, that's fine. The other thing that's a little bit disappointing about the two properties is it is a hike from your room to the street. So one of the great advantages of being center strip is that it's, it's fairly easy to access other properties. But again, Bellagio and Caesars Palace are set kind of way back from the street, so it's a little more of a hike. Perhaps the ideal property to stay at, if the price was right, and it usually sadly isn't, is the Cromwell. You could literally get from your room to the sidewalk in a minute or two if you were lucky as far as the elevator is concerned. It's a really nice property, kind of a boutique property. They have some nice bars and restaurants. Um, it, the level of service there as far as personal service is very high, but typically the price is as well. It can also get a little noisy when the club scene is going on the weekends. Keep that in mind. One of the properties I tend to recommend to anyone is Bally's. It's also the, the fourth hotel on that corner. It's set back a little bit from the strip, but not as bad as Bellagio or Caesars. The room rates are typically very reasonable. Um, the rooms are nice and spacious. One thing about the Caesars properties, which tend to be on the... Um, on this side of the strip is they uh, usually allow you to have an empty fridge, which is nice if you're you know, storing some leftovers or some water or some alcohol. Uh, it is a great thing to have. Most of the M-Life properties do not have it. That being said, the M-Life properties are typically a bit nicer. You have Aria, you have Vidaro, which is not a, a, a casino property, but is located very close to Aria, has a uh, indoor walkway to Bellagio, and I think it's a really good value for what you get. They're more like little apartments, so particularly if you're going to be staying for a while and you'd like to, or if you have uh, you know, family with you, you, know, you have like a little kitchenette. Some of the rooms have laundry facilities, and for the price, it's really good. Uh, so something to consider. Aria is probably my favorite M-Life property. It's probably the nicest property. Typically, it's about the same price as Bellagio, and frankly, that's, I would recommend going with Aria. Uh, another fairly good deal on the M-Life side uh, towards the north end of my recommended hotels is Mirage. Over the last few years, I think the prices have come down here. Uh, obviously, it's an older property. It's still very well maintained. Uh, some of the rooms uh, are a little bit small, uh, particularly the bathrooms, but, uh, you know, if it's your first time in Vegas and you're just wandering around, you're not going to spend a lot of time in the room anyway. Another property to consider, of course, is Cosmopolitan. It also tends to have a bit of a high price, uh, but that is probably due to the fact that so many of the rooms have an actual terrace. You can set out and enjoy the Las Vegas weather. In many cases, enjoy the Bellagio Fountains or a view of the airport or the South Strip, whatever you happen to get. Um, it's an amazing time. Not sure it's my choice for a first trip to Vegas because I don't see you all spending a lot of time in your room. You've been there a few times and uh, just love to relax and uh, enjoy perhaps coffee and uh, breakfast out uh, on a terrace or just sit and watch the fountains for a few hours with a couple of cocktails, then it might be the way to go. Um, the other sort of stretch of uh, this area is, is a bit more down market. I'm trying to put it down. I've stayed at all these properties um, and they were fine. Uh, and that'd be Harris, Link, and Flamingo. You're right there around the Link Promenade, the High Roller, which is a great, uh, uh, great way to see Las Vegas from the sky. 
Um, um, I think most all of the Harrah's rooms have been remodeled recently. They do not have refrigerators. Keep that in mind. The link tends to attract a younger, sort of more working class crowd. Uh, the rooms are okay. They're a little small based on the old Imperial Palace uh, sort of layout. Uh, and I suspect they are not wearing that well because, again, I think the clientele here is a bit uh, rough around the edges at times and uh, uh, the elevators are also notoriously slow. So keep that in mind. I like Flamingo, but uh, if you're going to stay at the Flamingo, make sure you look into one of the most recently remodeled rooms. The Go rooms are uh, been around for well over 10 years, and uh, while some of them are still in good condition, there are some that are looking a bit rough, and I think they have another, uh, the fab rooms, uh, which don't even have carpeting. So, um, so that's my thoughts on some of the hotel properties that are within that uh, uh, zone. I did mention Bally's. I did not mention Paris or Planet Hollywood. I like both of those properties. Paris is obviously a good choice if you want to experience a, a bit of uh, the Vegas-themed hotel, because I think along with New York, New York, they, um, Paris probably does it the best. Planet Hollywood is younger, louder. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I like it quite a bit. It's also sort of to the south end of the uh, recommended zone, but um, uh, definitely a place you want to check out. So there you go. That's my thoughts on the Vegas properties within the Go Zone for a new visitor. We've gone over 30 minutes, so if you've made it this far, I certainly appreciate you for doing so. Again, thanks to Tom and uh, thanks to Adam for uh, helping us out with this week's show. Hope you'll join us on Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. Vegas time for our live stream previewing the Las Vegas trip. Until then, I hope that you have a great, lucky, and healthy week. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.